Doctors often use hormone levels to diagnose various disorders of the endocrine system. In this video, we're looking specifically at the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis, or HPT axis. We're gonna look at four different disorders, a pituitary tumor, a thyroid tumor, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's disease, and we'll answer the question, why would somebody be prescribed artificial thyroid hormone to treat both hypothyroidism as well as a goiter, which is an enlarged thyroid gland? If you're looking for the physiology of a specific disease, here are the timestamps if you wanna to jump to one of those specifically. And if you need to brush up on the basics of the HPT axis, check out this video that I made, link in the description below. All right, let's jump to the whiteboard. First, let's look at a pituitary tumor, specifically a TSH secreting pituitary adenoma. An adenoma is just a tumor that's non-malignant or non-cancerous. In this case, the tumor stems from the pituitary gland, specifically growing from the cells that secrete TSH. With any of these disorders that we analyze, we're gonna start with where the disorder is and then work our way back through the feedback loop. So we're starting with the pituitary gland, and because of the tumor, the pituitary is gonna be releasing more TSH than it normally would be. So our thyroid stimulating hormone is gonna be higher than it should be. No matter what else happens, we know the TSH is gonna be high. That's what the tumor's doing, it's making more TSH. Starting from there, let's go back through and see what would happen with all of the other hormones involved. Well, if we have high TSH levels, that's gonna stimulate the thyroid to produce more T3 and T4. The excess T3 and T4 leads to hyperthyroidism. If this happens for a long time, that can cause the thyroid gland to start to swell and produce what's called a goiter, or an enlarged thyroid gland. Oftentimes, somebody's neck will start to bulge right down in here, because of that enlarged thyroid. Now with T3 and T4 levels too high, besides causing an increased metabolism, that's also gonna cause an increased amount of inhibition of the pituitary and the hypothalamus. Because of that, TRH levels will be low. Now of all these hormones, TSH and T3 and T4 are the ones that are most easily checked in a blood test. The amount of TRH normally made by the body is so little that we generally don't test for it. We're gonna just pay attention to the TSH and the T3 and T4 levels when diagnosing. So how would this diagnosis work? The patient would come to the doctor with some standard hyperthyroidism symptoms. That could be a goiter, it could be exophthalmos where the eyes kind of bulge out, it could be restlessness and sort of jitteriness. The doctor would then draw some blood and test for TSH and T3 and T4 levels. If the doctor finds that those are both high, one of the possible diagnoses will be a pituitary tumor. But the benefit of knowing these hormone levels is now the doctor knows where to look. One of the options is a pituitary tumor, among several other options that are gonna be tested with MRIs and CT scans and other diagnostic tools. So generally, the doctor will start with hormones and try to come up with a diagnosis from there. Whereas we're starting with the problem, in this case the tumor, and working our way through to find what the hormone levels are, they'll start with symptoms, they'll measure the hormone levels, and then from there know better where to look to diagnose. For our second example, we're gonna look at a tumor on the thyroid gland. This is often called a toxic thyroid adenoma. And again, an adenoma is just a tumor that's non-cancerous, but in this case, is gonna cause an overproduction of the hormone of the thyroid, which is T3 and T4. Now, of course, with T3 and T4 levels being high, the patient will experience hyperthyroidism, and that excess T3 and T4 is gonna inhibit the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. This will make TRH levels low, and this will make TSH levels also low. Now normally, low TSH levels would cause the T3 and T4 production to decrease, but that doesn't really happen here because we've got this tumor. This tumor is sort of out of control and it's overproducing T3 and T4, so even though we have less TSH than normal, the tumor is still overproducing T3 and T4. So what does this mean for a doctor and a patient? Well, this time if the patient comes to the doctor with hyperthyroidism symptoms, the doctor will test the hormone levels and they'll see that TSH is low and T3 and T4 are high. Based on those results, the doctor knows they don't really need to test for a pituitary tumor, but there is a chance that there's a thyroid tumor resulting in the low TSH and the high T3 and T4. So that's where they would look for that tumor. Next, we're gonna look at an autoimmune disorder called Graves' disease. An autoimmune disorder is whenever the body's own immune system is attacking or interacting with something that it's not supposed to normally. Normally, our immune systems fight off pathogens or bad things that are entering into our body. But in the case of an autoimmune disease, the immune system is doing something it shouldn't be doing. In Graves' disease specifically, there are autoantibodies or molecules in the bloodstream that are gonna interact and stimulate the receptors in the thyroid gland. They essentially do what the TSH molecule normally does, but instead of coming from the pituitary, they're coming from the body's immune system and they're out of control, stimulating that thyroid over and over and over again. This overstimulation of the thyroid gland often leads to goiter or enlarged thyroid, and it'll cause an overproduction of T3 and T4, leading to hyperthyroidism again. And then the excess T3 and T4 
will inhibit the pituitary and hypothalamus and bring down TRH and TSH levels. You'll notice on the diagram right now, the hormone levels are the same as they were with the thyroid tumor. So if a patient came in with hyperthyroidism and high T3 and T4 levels and low TSH levels, the doctor knows there's two places that they can look. They can test for those autoantibodies to look for Graves' disease, or they can use a scan to try to find a tumor on the thyroid gland. Of all the causes of hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease is actually the most common cause. Our fourth example is Hashimoto's disease, which is another autoimmune disease where the body's own immune system is attacking the body. In Hashimoto's disease, instead of the immune system stimulating the TSH receptors on the thyroid gland, the immune system is going to attack and start destroying the thyroid gland itself. If the thyroid gland is getting destroyed, that's gonna cause a decrease in T3 and T4 production, leading to hypothyroidism and a lower metabolism. The patient would come in feeling lethargic, low energy, maybe putting on weight, all those sort of classic hypothyroidism symptoms. So we're starting with where the disorder is and then we're gonna work our way back through the feedback loop. If T3 and T4 levels are low, well, there's nothing to inhibit the pituitary and hypothalamus. That's gonna cause TRH to be high and therefore TSH to be high. So if somebody goes to the endocrinologist feeling the classic symptoms of hypothyroidism, the endocrinologist will test for TSH and T3 and T4 levels. If the endocrinologist finds that TSH levels are high, but T3 and T4 levels are low, that's a good sign that Hashimoto's disease could be the cause of the hypothyroidism. The doctor would then perform other diagnostic tests to see if Hashimoto's disease is the actual cause. Finally, I wanna answer this question. Why give artificial T3 and T4 for both goiter and hypothyroidism. A common treatment for various endocrine disorders is prescribing an artificial version of a hormone that the body normally produces. For hypothyroidism, I think this makes a lot of sense. In hypothyroidism, T3 and T4 production will be low, so the patient will be prescribed artificial T3 and T4 to take over the function of the T3 and T4 that the body's not producing. It makes total sense. But in the case of a goiter, an enlarged thyroid gland, why would we prescribe T3 and T4, the hormone that the thyroid gland makes itself anyway? Well, let's follow the feedback loop and see what happens. So here we have a goiter, an enlarged thyroid gland, and we would expect that TSH levels are gonna be higher than they should be. After all, something has to have caused the goiter or the growth of the thyroid gland. And usually that's gonna be TSH. So now let's pretend that the patient is prescribed artificial T3 and T4. And I'm drawing that here in the diagram with more orange circles. This of course will cause the T3 and T4 levels to be a little bit higher than they otherwise would. That'll stimulate the metabolism. But again, that's also gonna go back and inhibit the other hormones in the feedback loop. That'll cause TRH to decrease, but it will also cause TSH to decrease. And if TSH is lower than normal, what effect will that have on the thyroid gland over time? Well, as we know, less TSH means the thyroid gland won't be stimulated to grow. In fact, over time, it will start to shrink and reducing the size of the thyroid back to normal and therefore working as an effective treatment of the goiter or the enlarged thyroid gland. Now, this was by no means a comprehensive review of all the possible endocrine orders of the HPT axis. But if you understand these examples and how the HPT axis works, you can use this to start to understand other disorders of the endocrine system and the HPT axis. Two other hormonal axes, the HPA, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, and HPG, hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis, act very similarly to the HPT axis. So if you can understand this axis and how it works, you'll have a really good start in understanding how our stress hormones are regulated as well as our sex hormones. Hey, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe or check out other videos I have on the endocrine system and the other systems of the body. All right, Mortimer, what do you think? Should I end the video there? Yeah, sounds good to me.